What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Become a Local Leader. My name is Grant Felicieres, and on today's episode, we have Chip Barkle with EXP Realty in Toronto, and who he is the local leader for Willowdale on Park Bench. And the exciting part that why we brought Chip on today's show is to talk about his story and his chapter in the upcoming book, Becoming a Local Leader, which is a book that features 21 real estate agents, 23 or 21, I keep forgetting, but 21, 23, I think. 23 now? Yeah. yeah. We were supposed to cap out at 20, but we had so many people who wanted to apply. Um, and so these are top real estate agents who have built their business on relationships and referrals in a specific geographic area. And it goes through their stories on how they did it and some of the philosophies they have on how they've built a business on relationships and referrals. Because I know advertising just doesn't work so much anymore. It's expensive, you know, cold calling and door knocking and other cold prospecting just doesn't work or isn't fun for people. And people think like, well, how, how do I build a business on relationships and referrals? Like, can I do it? Will, will my business grow fast enough, big enough, if this is how I do it? And, you know, a chip and all the authors, and then myself working with so many realtors over the years, we've learned that yes, yes, you can build a great business on relationships and referrals. You don't need um, to spend a lot of money on, and time on advertising and buying leads. Um, and so we wanted this book to kind of uh, uncover this black box for some and use agent stories as a way to do it so that other agents out there can read what other agents are doing and, and kind of how they've done it and have a, a fun read learning about some other people. So I'm excited to dig into Chip's story today, have you guys get to know him um, and, and get his pearls of wisdom. So thanks, Chip, for being on the show. Thank you very much, Grant, for inviting me. Um, now, we'll get into the details of, of who you are and, and some of your strategies and tactics and things that work and don't work from your experience, from your perspective. Um, but why don't we just go higher level? You know, you wrote this chapter and you want to be a part of this book because you have a message that you want to share with real estate agents out there, with the industry. Um, so what, are, what is your main message to people if you had to sum it up? And, and what do you hope they will get from reading uh, your chapter? Well, thank you. The, what I, it's really quite simple. Um, what my chapter is about is, is building relationships within your community. You know, to be a good neighbor, to have good neighbors, you have to be a good neighbor, you know, which is very simple. It kind of goes back to when we were kids and your mother would say, you know, be nice, treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, it's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. But some of us have lost touch, lost track of that. And um, uh, it's really, you know, relationships matter, and um, the more exposure and the more you can relate with your neighbors in your community, um, the more they will get to know you. And, you know, that whole uh, adage that we've heard a million times, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. I would add and remember. <laughs> um, and so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about building relationships. You, uh, you talked about... Um people losing track and losing touch with what is a fundamental of real estate. Real estate is a relationship-based business. It is a people business. Um, why do you think agents have lost touch with that side of the business? Because if you go to a trade show, there's hundreds of advertising companies. And when agents look at their mailbox and their voicemail, there's lots of people trying to sell them ad services and ad solutions and buy this lead or that lead. Um, why do you think they've lost touch? Well, it? I think a lot of people don't want to invest the time, and it, does, it can take a little bit more time. Um, people want instant gratification. They want to take a pill to fix things. You know, I'll pay some money, buy some leads, and then I'll have business. You know, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't quite work that way. You know, you can buy leads, sure, they'll take your money, but what's the quality of those leads? You know, and and. Um, you know, are they seriously looking or are they just kicking tires or, you know, um, you know, it's, it's again, goes back to quality. When people talk about 
delaying gratification. Like I've read lots of books and you say delay gratification is a best practice, but I usually read it in the, in the sense of um, like finance and money, you know, save money now, don't live, be, live below your means. And, and when you make more money, don't just go spend it, delay the gratification, invest it, and you'll have a better future. What would you say is the downside to the immediate gratification for agents because they're like hey i'm just going to do things to get a deal now to get a client now i'm going to make decisions with where i spend my time and money for the immediate what have you found because you've been in the industry for a long time what have you found is the downsides that maybe they don't see maybe new agents don't see what it might do for what, what problems it could cause down the road well, you can either be a transactional agent or you can be a relational agent. Very, I don't think it's really possible to be both. You know, <laughs> obviously, you want to you want to have transactions under your belt, um, but a strictly transactional agent um, will do the deal, and you just don't hear from them again. And you know, and, and it's very personal, intense relationship when you're dealing with with an agent. Before I was I was an agent for his license. Um, I um, had an, met an agent in an open house, left the open house, or actually, no, it was, it was a showing, left the showing saying, you know, that house is not for us. But I said, if we ever sell, we're using her. <laughs> and that was based on like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, being in the house with her. But she mm -hmm. was personable. She was um, engaged. She was the kind of person that I, um, she was relatable. And, and all those things I think are important. However, as much, and of course, you know, it was very intense. We bought, we sold, I actually did three transactions with her in, in like a year. But as soon as it's over, you know, so you have this really intimate relationship and intense relationship until closing and then boom, it's over. And, you know, this was something I liked, I liked, you know, hanging out with her. And, you know, so if she had picked up the phone once or twice every six months and say, hey, how are you doing, Chip? You know, it would have been great. But mm -hmm. she just not mm -hmm. built that way. And um, come the recession, people like that will suffer, you know, because people will continue to buy and sell. But, um, you know, it's, it's, those relationships will really matter when there's a downturn. So when things are going great, it might not matter. You may, you know, you may still get business. But, um, you know, when push comes to shove, um, you want somebody who's going to be on your team and mm -hmm. uh, feel like they have, uh, you know, a, a relationship with you and an investment in a relationship. What is it? I've heard that before that, you know, in a recession or downturn, uh, relationships matter more, your database, your sphere of influence, your brand matters more. Uh, is it because um, people don't uh, is it because ads get too expensive or is it because the consumer doesn't listen to ads as much, you know, or, or what is it that makes. I think in, matter in more tougher in times, it's that much harder to break into, you know, um, to, to break in. Like there's less business to go around and there are more hungry agents. Mm. Um, and I think that's really what it is. It's, so it's harder to reach those people and kind of crack the nut, if you will. Um, because, um, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of hungry agents out there. So, and, you know, people tell me, you know, my mother could have used any number of agents. And I say, yeah, there are 60,000 agents in, in my MLS. <laughs> You're right. She could have. I'm thrilled and honored she chose me. Um, and so that's what we're talking about. It's like, you know, when push comes to shove, they say, no, no, I, you know, those 12, 15, 20, 30, 50 agents are knocking on the door saying, no, no, I have an agent. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't, why don't uh, we, we zoom out and get to know Chip a little bit? Why don't you kind of tell everyone a little bit about yourself and, and why you got into real estate? Well, real estate was always the road not taken for me. It was always a real interest. Um, when, I, when I was in my teens, I had a business, a uh, small business um, that I ran. It was an antiques business and um, went to university, came out with a teaching degree and thinking, well, no matter what I do, I could teach as kind of a fallback position. Um, and I did do that. I taught for a couple of years. Um, it was an area era when there weren't a lot of teaching jobs out there. So it was a little bit, you know, um, unstable and uh, felt vulnerable. So I thought, well, um, why don't I learn programming, whatever that is, and I can teach that. <laughs> so I became a computer programmer. 
and um, eventually, after a few years, went into training, corporate training. And mm -hmm. so I, I then taught computer programmers uh, for a number of years. Um, so again, my teaching, the computers kind of put them together. Um, so, it, you know, real estate was always there as kind of an interest, but it's really hard to leave a full-time salaried position for a job that doesn't pay anything. You know, there's a famous quote that with real estate, you're right, there's no ceiling, but there's no floor to what you can make either. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was kind of, you know, conscious of that. It's like, eh, you know, not sure, not sure. Um, at one point, my company was bought out by another, you know, corporate takeover, and um, I was downsized, and I thought, well, if not now, when will I ever do it? And this is my opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do, follow a passion. So that's when I went into real estate. If you had to start all over again today, so say you're a brand new agent, because uh, there's so many new ones joining, and there's a record number of new agents joining, and a lot of people are in their first you know, five years of real estate. Um, what would your advice be for them of like, so that you don't have zero, you're not at the floor. Yeah. How, how does one make, you know, 50 to a hundred grand their first year or more? Like what would be your game plan if you were to do this again? Well, I, I belong to a lot of Facebook groups with a lot of new uh, agents and I tell them the same thing, build relationships. And um, that's, that's where I come from. It's what I believe. Uh, can you do it some other way? Maybe. But um, for me, this is kind of the tried and true method. So my first listing, she actually called me, not the other way around. <laughs> so uh, in fact, you know, I, I had helped her with something. She, was a, she wasn't a friend. She was a vendor. I was actually her customer. And she called me and asked me something about real estate. And I gave her some advice. And then I called her back and said, I'm going to be joining the brokerage that I referred you to. She said, well, when you land, give me a call. We'll have lunch. So she took me to lunch to celebrate my new career. And a week later, she called me and said, I'd like you to list my house. So it was, it was based on that relationship that I had built. Relationships is this word that everyone just talks <laughs> about in real estate. Uh, very, and, and, and everyone will probably even say like, hey, what should you do to build your business? And they say build relationships. But yet so many people don't or they don't make it. They don't do a good job. So when you think about breaking down, you know, what does that mean to focus on relationships, to build relationships? What are the things that you've done that other agents don't do that allows you to get clients through relationships and referrals? Good question. Um, I think it's about giving to give, not to get. You know, I, with her, you know, I made it clear that I chose her over, you know, a lot of other vendors. Um, I was, I referred her business. Um, I was thrilled to be able to use her. She, she was a vendor for outdoor lighting and I used her for my house. Um, now there was a, a vendor for outdoor lighting that came with the landscaping package and I was like, no, no, no. I get a better feeling from her, I'm going to use her. And then she came back to me and said, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So. You know, I just, I could have just said, well, why are you asking me? It's your business. Do whatever you want. But I didn't do that. I, I gave to gave, give, you know, and, um, uh, it, you know, invested and um, it came back. And it's kind of, you know, it's karma. That's, you know, we, we attach a lot of words to those things, but it's the same thing. Um, in my neighborhood, when I first became an agent, I sponsored a yard sale, a street sale, to let people know, hey, I'm Chip and I'm here and I'm an agent and um, this is who I am. I'm one of you. I belong in the neighborhood. I end up getting uh, a fairly sizable listing from that as well. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's being present um, and not being present for your own, um, uh, your own uh, profit, but just being present to say, what, what can I give to the neighborhood? What can I give to, the, to you and your business? You know, a, a lot of business um, networking groups, you say, Grant, tell me about your business. What kind of a client would be the best kind of client to refer to you? It's not about me, it's about you. And I think that's the difference that a lot of agents don't, uh, don't follow. I can hear some agents being like, well, I'm afraid, uh, you know, if I do these things, it just may not work. I, I, I worry that I will spend time and money on people and care and give, and then I just won't get anything in return. And then I'll, and then I'll have nothing. Well, what would you say to an agent who, who has that, that thought? 
you could do the same thing with cold calling or door knocking. You know, you could spend, you know, it's it's 90 degrees, you know, 30 something Fahrenheit uh, Celsius. I could spend days out there knocking on doors in the heat and get nothing out of it. You know, it's uh, it's the same thing. There's, you know, it's a risky business. Um, you're you're self-employed. It's up to you to build the business, and um, you know there are no guarantees. That's now how do, now. What makes you feel certain, though, in all the stuff that you do? That's relationship based, you know, database driven. That it will end up working. In the beginning, it was just a. Um, an innate sense, you know, my core gut, that's kind of how I'm built. Um, I'm more relational as a person. Um, you know, I hoped it would work. And I, I believed in it. And it's like anything else. If you, if you believe something's going to work or you believe something won't work, it's not going to work, you know. So yeah. um, I, it's just, it's who I am. It's how I like to live my life. And, and one, uh, of the things, one of the things that you do that other agents would go, what? <laughs> is you spend time and money and energy helping local businesses, schools, community groups, nonprofits, um, not, again, giving to give, but you know that it does help you build your real estate business, working with homeowners, where some real estate agents are like, I'm in real estate, I should be targeting homeowners. Why would I want to spend time, money, and energy on business owners and schools and nonprofits some people really do have a hard time making that connection. How do you justify in your head? Like, what's the, what do you believe about why it's, it's a useful thing to do, a good use of your time and, and energy? Well, they are your neighbors. These businesses are, are in your neighborhood. They're your neighbors. Um, they may not own uh, property in your neighborhood, but they, I bet you they do own property somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like this outdoor lighting woman, you know, when she, she didn't even call, she emailed me. I'd like you to sell my house, list my house for sale. And it was in Uxbridge and I was a new agent. It was my first listing. I hung up the phone. And I was like, I'm in Toronto. I was like, where is Uxbridge? Can we sell in Uxbridge? <laughs> I, but I figured it out. I, oh, it's part of our, our MLS. Who knew? And um, drove up there, took a little tour around. She had decided um, strategically she wanted a Toronto agent mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because she thought that the buyer would come from Toronto. She knew knew me, liked me, trusted me, and um, you know, uh, called. She called me. Because so, some some agents also think about that. They go, I don't want to focus too much in a specific geographic area because I'm afraid I might pigeonhole myself. Right. Well, I don't either. That's, that's the last thing I want to do. And um, I, I always tell people I am relationship oriented. I go where my clients take me, you know, whether yeah. that's you know, all across the GTA in Toronto. So that's, you know, I'll, my rule of thumb is I'll go about an hour. That's about the furthest I'll go at travel time. Um, and I either want to know the area or want to figure I can learn enough about the area quickly to represent my clients, uh, whether they're buyers or sellers, um, represent them well. Now, one of the things I want to go into some tactical stuff, because I know people are just always, you know, agents want to learn things that they can apply today, tomorrow, this month. Um, or on the flip side, I think there's also what's most important is for them to maybe realize what not to do. Yes. Because they sometimes look at people at the top who have a lot of money and a big budget and a lot of write-off requirements, mm. and they go, oh, well, I need to do what that top agent's doing. Um, and sometimes that may not be the best thing because, you know, that person's in a totally different position than, than you are. So when you think about some of the lessons that you've learned, uh, things not to do that you would impart uh, onto agents uh, to help them not waste time and, and not go through some of the trial and error that you did. Um, what would be some of those lessons? Well, um, what not to do is don't buy every shiny object that comes down the pike. Um, we all get called all the time about, oh, I want to sell you this, I want to sell you that. However, having said that, I um, became a client of Park Bench as a result of one of those calls. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I, I said, well, I'm willing to listen. So, you know, tell me how it works. Tell me what it's all about. And I realized a, a light bulb moment for me, a aha moment was 
when I thought, well, Park Bench is going to build me this website for my neighborhood, and they're going to add content around festivals when we could have festivals, and um, you know, events, news clippings for my neighborhood. All I have to do is interview people, get to know people in the neighborhood, interview them, uh, business owners, and. I thought, you know, they're a bigger organization than Chip Barkell. <laughs> um, so SEO-wise, I decided that was probably something to look into. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what, if it doesn't work, I've tried other things that didn't work. But it just, it made sense. And um, I think that's what you have to do on the positive side. is like, does what you're trying to do make sense? Because you, you can't do everything yourself. Um, you want to leverage time and money. Um, however... You know, a lot of these things with buying leads and, and other gimmicks that come along, a lot of them don't make sense. You know, say, okay, well, you know, so you have to, you have, to have a little bit of a gut feeling and use judgment um, in there as well. What about right now? I mean, we're in a time where inventory is still a shortage, huge buyer demand. The market's pretty crazy. It's 2021. Um, what have you found? Have you tried anything that doesn't work to help you get listings? Listings is like the gold mine right now. Um, have you tried some things that you're just like, ah, that didn't work? I tried things when earlier in my career, you know, Google ad words and, um, you know, some of those kinds of things. And it was like, oh, I didn't see anything from that, you know, um, and um, I just stopped it, moved on. Um, And that's why I always look at the price point of something that comes along. Um, I also send cards and have a relationship marketing business. And sending cards is a big part of my business. It's really cheap to do it. So it's like, you know what, even if it doesn't work, like I haven't lost a lot. And with Park Bench, I thought, you know, it's an amount of money that's manageable on a monthly basis. Um, So, you know, it's, it's, you know, try it, let it, let it prove itself one way or the other. Um, and if not, then move on and, and know when to kind of cut it off and say, okay, I tried that, didn't work, we're going to move on. But uh, in terms of what to do, um, things like the, the uh, Become a Local Leader book that's coming out, you're going to have 23 chapters of, of agents that have experience that are saying, this works, you know, do, do this. <laughs> you know, so we're, all you have to do is buy the book, read it, and implement it. And it's all there, you know, (laughs) so it's like I wish that book existed when I started uh, because it would have made my life a lot easier. Um, If you were to break down like your your day right now, right, because one of the things I tell agents all the time is keep things simple. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you look at what you do spend your time on because you it's a useful profit producing activity for you, a good use of your time. What are the other things that you do um, to grow your business right now? Well, I have a, a business plan. And um, as I mentioned, I, I have uh, I send cards. So I send probably about nine cards a day when you average it over a year. Um, some of those are group send cards, you know, happy new year, happy spring, ice cream in the summer because it's a fun national ice cream day. It's kind of a fun holiday to celebrate. Thanksgiving, if I know when your birthday is, the birthday card, of keeping in touch. Um, I also have a newsletter, a monthly newsletter that I send out, either email or paper. Um, right now, in fact, today I worked on an article for that for my July issue. On uh, It's called Garage Envy, um, making over your garage, um, turning it from storage space to living space. Cool. And, um, you know, just kind of fun things that I try to put as much fun into as possible, not just make things, you know, do you want to sell your house? Do you want to buy a house? You know? um, also, I mentioned relationships. So I do Popeyes um, three, four or five times a year. The summer I make jam, strawberry, blueberry and peach jam. I have a label that has my name on it. Um, with Chip, you'll never be in a real estate jam. You know, it's a little funny, <laughs> but you know. And for me, that's something that's going to hang around in the refrigerator with my name on it, uh, sit on the table. So it, it's sticky, literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, I also created uh, jar openers. Like a lot of these Popeye gifts that people use, I think are really corny and kind of like, oh, that wouldn't fly for me. So I thought, I'll only give something away that I wouldn't mind using myself. So. I had um, these house-shaped rubber jar openers created that, you know, help you open up a jar that's kind of stubborn. And um, again, 
It's going to sit in their drawer, has my name on it. I don't care if they never use it. But every time they open their, their cutlery drawer, they're going to see my name. <laughs> so, and then at Christmas, um, October, I do pumpkins, pie pumpkins. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a reason to knock on their door and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, that's yeah. it's not about the $2.50 pie pumpkin. I remember one year, a couple years ago, I knocked on this woman's door. It was the very first pumpkin I was stopping to give away. And um, she said, oh, come in, come in. She said, you know, I'm going to be 90 in the spring. And I think it's time to sell. You know, well, was it that $2 pumpkin? No. <laughs> it was a relationship that I had built, you know, rather than yeah. some stranger knocking on our door saying, well, who are you and what do you want? Um, and then at Christmas, I make mincemeat. Um, and I had one, I think part of the jam and those gifts, it's the experience. It's not what it is. Um, I had this one client, she was 94 years old, and she said to me, your mincemeat tasted exactly like my mother's mincemeat. And I was like, your mother <laughs> it's like wow you know I said, well actually the recipe is probably older than your mother because from the you know the 1800s um so that helps you become more memorable and uh so they're the kinds of things that i do you know what um, i like uh, uh, the the theme that comes when i hear that is the, the job of a realtor is to be memorable. It's for people to remember you so that when they want to buy or sell, they go, hey, Chip, can you come list my house? Hey, can you help me buy a home? And if their friend asks them for a realtor, oh, yeah, I know a guy, Chip. And so it's like, how do you do that? And if you ever do research about marketing, the amount of ads that you'd have to put in front of a person to make an impact on their brain so that they remember you just keeps going up and up and up and up year after year. You know, we're bombarded with so many ads so that we just all keep getting more desensitized to it. And just like you talked about that open house conversation, 15 minutes, I like you and I remembered you. And all these things that you've done for people in your database that you know, it is giving them an experience which makes them have a feeling and we all can like close our eyes. Remember this amazing concert we've been to. That's one concert, one thing you'll never forget forever for the rest of your life. And it's like, what can you as a realtor do for people to kind of evoke feeling and emotion um, and create an experience? Cause that one thing could actually be the memory um, that locks you in. I think it's important to remember to do it about, make it about them, not about you. Um, my partner came up from work a couple of years ago. You know, people, you know, partners say, oh, somebody at work. And it's, it's a name, you know the name, but you've never met the person. You know? So he came home and said, oh, this guy at work, he's um, leaving. He's going to got a new job, he's leaving. And I said, well, I send cards. That's what I do. I said, well, let's send him a card congratulating him on his new job. Now... I wasn't calculating enough to think, when do people buy real estate? When they get married, get divorced, have children, or get a promotion or get a new job. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, congratulations, they're gonna miss you, the new place is lucky to have you. Well, two months later, who called me out of the blue, uh, but this guy saying, I wanna buy a condo. He's a first time buyer, mm -hmm. that's great. We found him a place uh, a couple of months. That was two years ago. This past Christmas, got another call from him. Hey, um, remember me? Well, of course I do. <laughs> and um, well, he said, I'm, I'm in a relationship. I want to buy a house. We're going to move in together. Um, so I want to sell the condo. So I helped him sell his condo, help him buy a house. Um, and so as that relationship had been built, because I stopped to say, what can I do for him? Let's, let's congratulate him. Let's say, you know, they're lucky to have you. Good luck. Um, it wasn't, you know, about remember I'm a realtor, you know, I, I don't ask for business that way. It's not necessary. Well, you can't, I, I think you can't create an experience. You can't create a positive feeling if it's about you. When you try to do something for someone else, unconditionally, where you're like, I don't, whether they use it or not, I don't care whether, you know, I'm just giving and to give, to give, and unconditionally to give actually allows for the experience, the feelings, the emotions to even be had so that people can then, to me, I tell people, if you study neuroscience and psychology, that's what gives you the 
certainty and the faith and the belief that when you give to give and give unconditionally, it's gonna, and you do it enough, it's gonna come back to you because human nature says the law of reciprocity is how we operate as a species. Um, this is all really cool. I, li- I like that you went into some details. I hope people took notes and listened because he <laughs> gave you a bunch of ideas of things that you can do for your database and for your community. So if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn from you, if they want to refer business to you, if they want to hire you, uh, how can they get in touch with you? I'm all over the internet. If you Google Chip Arkell or go to parkbench.com slash Willowdale, that would be the best way to do it. And you will find me and it'd be easy to get in touch with me. And if you were to sum up, uh, I think you kind of talked about it a little earlier, but you know, why, if, if, why do you think an agent should read Becoming a Local Leader? Well, the secret sauce for 23 authors is in that book. So even, you don't have to do everything. I always say a table has four legs. So I like to have four things or four pillars that I work on. Um, read it. Um, some of the stories will resonate with you and some of them might not. Um, but, you, you know, do what you find, um, you know, p- you're passionate about. Um, you know, there's you know, people say, well, if you do what you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life um, and you'll probably be better at it. So, um, you know, it's uh, find what works for you, what resonates, try it, doesn't work, try something else. But it's like a, it's like a cookbook, you know, there's a, a recipe book for, you know, 23 recipes and you'll find one that you like. Well, Chip has four things in that book. So if you want to learn the four things that he's done to help him build his business, uh, pick up a copy. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks, Chip, for being on the show. Uh, and I'm excited for the book to be launched. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Uh, Grant, thanks very much for having me. Take care.